SDI distinguishes itself in terms of our services just outside the supply of the tracker. We'll call it the steel component. SDI has a lot of value add in terms of the ability to perform analyses of the terrains. That can help the client reduce the number of civil works or get a higher installed capacity on site. We interface a lot for recommendations in terms of communications or foundation designs. So SDI's core value add is to actually try and create value for the client in the project. Such as similarly, we are very happy to get involved in the project earlier on. I mean, in terms of guiding, making geotechnical recommendations, providing documentation or drawings that can help the client in the development of the project. Because the more work you do up front, the easier it makes the project to execute at a later stage. Yeah, and then you're saving on costs as well in the process. Correct. But it's always that fine balance between spending a little bit more up front and then saving in the long term. But ultimately, the more you invest in the beginning, the more you get okay. out in the long term. Has SDI in South Africa received indications of interest for dual row solar trackers um, as of yet? Or is it, is it still a bit quiet? No, very active. We currently supplying 100 megawatts to the market. And that is outside RMIPP and REIPP. Yeah. So huge demand and also many, many requests for quotes. So it's, STI is in a very privileged position at the moment. We okay. are one of the top five tracker suppliers globally. And we have a track record in South Africa. We have a local presence. And one of STI's biggest value adds in South Africa is that we can meet the local content requirements. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that feeds into my next question. Uh, you mentioned on your website that you will look into tapping into existing manufacturing infrastructure in South Africa as the expertise and capacity already exists here. Does this mean that you will partner with companies to manufacture solar trackers once demand picks up? Um, please tell me a bit about your, your plans in this regard. That's correct. So it's not that we will, it's that we have. We are already moving towards serial production of our trackers locally. We expect the first components meeting all the local content requirements, including having purchased local steel, to be on route to site in the next eight weeks or so. Okay. So we've taken the local content quite seriously. So, and also we've geared up for high volumes. Typically we look in at a capacity of around 150 megawatts a month, okay. which is below. Okay. And also with our suppliers, we see them more as partnerships, because we work a lot with them. We're involved in the quality and it's looking for a long-term relationship going forwards not only for these projects now, but the risk mitigation around further big window rounds. Yeah. How do you go about selecting suppliers? Do you to sort of have a certain criteria that they have to meet? Yes. They need to be able to prove that they can meet quality standards. They need to have experience in the industry. Uh, they need to be financially secure. And they need to be willing to work and meet project deadlines. How so much? All, Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, so I'm saying all the suppliers are being very forthcoming. And also one of the key requirements for us is economic development. We look for suppliers that are, for example, level two or can assist in that regard. Okay. Um, how much of the dual solar trackers as components can be sourced locally? At this stage, as a total basket, it is around 75%. Okay. So that's if you include all costs from transportation to labor to sorry, labor site supervision um, as a basket. 
So that's a little bit more beyond than just the steel components. In terms of the physical mounting structures, we exceed the 90%. Okay. Will you try to develop manufacturing capacity for the remaining components that you still have to import, or will you rather opt for to keep on importing those? If the capacity exists in South Africa, we will definitely look into it, uh, capacity and expertise. But currently, for example, something like tractor controllers or stew motors, they are a commodity item globally. They normally source from a few companies. Um, at this stage, there's no indication to localize that content, but it's something we're very open to. Maybe if I could expand a little bit on our approach to local content. Yeah. Uh, we don't do it to pick the box. We do it to see if we can support the STI group globally. So, for example, if we can manufacture the component in South Africa and it is more cost effective than manufacturing something else, uh, we're very open to actually supplying it globally from South Africa because it's a key for me to not only do South African projects with local content, it's a great value add for us and the country if we can supply it further abroad. There are some challenges in that regard, but our approach is not just to pick the box. In South Africa as a whole, we have a great solar resource, we have the expertise to execute the projects, and we have key suppliers, such as SDI, which is a global top five tracker supplier. And there's definitely an energy to the market at the moment. People are keen to do solar projects. And if we look at the embedded generation that has been moved to 10 megawatts, the cap gets moved to 10 megawatts, the same or next day project requests are 10 megawatts. So I believe the solar industry will be taking off more than it has been to date. 